Hi everyone, thank you for joining our session. Today we are going to talk about how to make the most of platform events through the PubSub API. My name is Gabriel Juarez. I work for a company called Tero. Tero is a Uruguayan company that helps North American companies to scale their teams with Latin American talent. And today with me is Fede. Hi everyone. My name is Federico Kleinman. I work as a technical lead at Altimetric Uruguay. Altimetric is a consulting company based in focus sorry, in digital business that helps our companies to reach success. So when planning our proposal, we decided to ask ChatGPT if we should use the PubSub API for integrating our system. But the answer was quite disappointing. It said, Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Please contact your account executive. So today's goal will be to answer this question and, and help you decide if the PubSub API fits your needs. Yeah, actually, if you can try searching again, maybe you can have a, a better result because we, we train it. So today we are going to talk about event-driven architectures, PubSub API, platform events, uh, some use cases, benchmarking, and finally, a demo. Yeah, so to start, let's talk a little bit about event-driven architectures. These architectures are based on the publisher and subscriber model, and they are based on events. So we have a channel where the different producers are going to publish the messages, and then we are going to have consumers that are going to be subscribing to any of the data change. So an easy way to explain uh, event-driven architectures is to see the difference with any other point-to-point -point integrations that are traditionally built using HTTP REST callouts, where in those scenarios, we say that those systems are tightly coupled because um, first they need to rely that those systems are wrapped, and they also need to know um, how to pass the parameters, so they need to know the implementations, and they also need to um, know how to handle the response accordingly. And additionally, um, you, if you need to add more subscribers or more um, systems, you will need to um, adapt your implementations. So with event-driven architectures, this doesn't happen. So we, we say that those architectures are not tightly coupled because essentially we are shifting the responsibility from the producers to the subscribers in order to handle those responses. So let's see some of the benefits about these integration patterns. Um, data consistency, for example, because you're publishing a single event and all the subscribers are receiving the same uh, message. This also helps, of course, reusability. And uh, as the publishers and subscribers are independent, you can scale uh, the resources for, for each uh, publisher or subscribers also independently. And a key benefit of these integrations is the extensibility, because you can add as many subscribers as you need, and this helps also to keep your technical debt really low uh, as your organization or solution grows. So when should we favor the usage of these architectures? Well, mainly for uh, notification-based integrations, where we send small payloads, and it, it also is, is good for real-time integrations or near real-time integrations. And also, it's good for the coupling systems because you not only can decouple the logic, but you also can decouple the deployments and potentially your teams. So now that Gabriel has given us a great overview around the event-driven architectures, we can dive into the specifics of PubSub API. PubSub API was released last year and is a brand new way of integrating systems within the Salesforce platform. It's built on top of the new event bus, which is a separate runtime uh, developed with Apache Kafka. Um, it's worth to mention that PubSub API uses the same interface for publishing and subscribing, which is a difference with other APIs that we will show on next slides. If we have to talk specifically about the infrastructure of PubSub API, we have to say that it's based on gRPC and HTTP2. GRPC, it's a protocol developed by Google uh, for microservices architectures. Um, PubSub API uses binary event messages, which is a different, again, 
with other uh, APIs that we will be showing on next slides. And as I mentioned on the previous slides, it uses a single interface to publish and subscribe to events. Talking about implementation, it is a pool-based subscription, which means that you will have control over the events and when to receive the events. You will control the amount of the events that you can receive, and you will also control when to get those events from the event bus. It supports 11 uh, programming languages. Um, some of them are Python, Node, Java, JavaScript, and actually it supports every language that is based or supports gRPC. Finally, PubSub API can be used with change data capture, platform events, but it can be used with push topics or generic events. This table is the one that you will um, find if you search PubSub API in the Salesforce documentation. In this table, we try to highlight the three most important or the three keynotes that we wanted to share with you. Those are event encoding, protocol, and subscription model. The event encoding in PubSub API is binary, while in the streaming API is a JSON format. This is a huge change in, in terms of performance because the binary messages tend to be smaller than the JSON format, and that makes the PubSub API faster. In regards of the protocol, as we said, uh, PubSub API uses gRPC, while streaming API uses Comet D. And at the subscription model, also, as we said, PubSub API has a pool-based uh, model, which gives you the control over the events, while the streaming API has a push-based model, which means that you will be always listening in the event bus for the new events to come. Now that we have talked about PubSub API and also event-driven architectures, the final piece are messages. In Salesforce, we use platform events as the source of the messages. Those messages are secure and scalable, and they are really similar to custom objects in the sense that you can configure them using the Salesforce UI, and also you can add fields, mostly primitive fields like text, number, booleans, or dates, into it. If you want to publish or subscribe, you can use flows, you can use Apex triggers, and of course, PubSub API. All right, now let's talk about some of the use cases that you could use with event, event driven architectures and the PubSub API. And one of the most popular, or at least the one that we found that, you know, more examples, was about order management. So there are a lot of things that happen after you purchase something online. Uh, and different systems that interact together. And you can map each step uh, into an event. So you have fulfillment, you have to um, notify uh, the warehouse where your products are stored, you have to process cancellations, you have to process returns, you have to capture the payments, you know, notify the people uh, and everything. And actually the um, order management system from Salesforce is built uh, using this kind of event-driven architectures. And the entire life cycle of the fulfillment of the order is automated using flows and platform events. So, and it works really well. Uh, then uh, a real use case we, we have a couple of projects ago was to implement or use the native features of the mobile payments of the mobile phones. And, and we have the Google and Apple servers notifying Salesforce when a payment was captured. And also we have the uh, server of the mobile application that we're also notifying Salesforce about that. So um, we didn't know which event could come first. So we switched the responsibility uh, to Salesforce to manage uh, and decide after both events arrive, which one to process and, and how to continue. And if we move to the field of IoT, possibilities are endless. Uh, because you have today many devices that can publish data in real time, and you have different uh, things to do, like monitoring, you see, for customer support, or just to sell more. Well, in order to confirm theory, we designed two experiments. Uh, the first one was to confirm that the publishing was faster in PubSub API. And the second one was to confirm that actually subscribing to events is also faster in a streaming API. What we did was to develop some scripts uh, coded in JavaScript and Node in which we trigger 200 platform events by using the streaming API and 
the same events by using the REST API. In this table, you can see the comparison. Uh, we found out that uh, Bob Sub API is two times faster in terms of performance than the REST API. Then the second experiment was to do actually kind of the same, but now we are receiving platform events, subscribing to platform events using the Pub Sub API and the streaming API. We subscribe to 100 events, and also the results were similar in terms of performance. We can say that Pub Sub API is faster than REST API and streaming API for publishing and for subscribing. Keep in mind that if you try to uh, run the same experiment as we did, it will throw, it may throw different results, mostly because of the coding of your script, the hardware that you're using, and the internet connection. Right, so for the demo, uh, let's imagine we are here at Dreamforce and we are going to model the system that is going to capture all the scans of the badges in the different booths and different sections. And we are going to send that data into Salesforce in order to do our processing or maybe notify people where, when they win any prize. So uh, this is the simple uh, kind of architecture we have here. Um, we have basically different publishers that are going to be the um, mobile phones that are scanning. and They are going to be publishing the events through the PubSub API. And we are going to um, consume those events in the Salesforce platform using flows. So everything running uh, through the event bus. So the first step will be to define our platform event. For doing that, you are going to go to the setup and search for platform events and create a new one, basically similarly uh, how you create a, a custom object. You define the name, uh, the API name, and also the description, of course. And then you add all the fields that are going to be the attributes that are going to be using. And uh, for our use case, we have created a couple um, fields here, the booth ID, the email, and the scan date. But you can add any, any custom fields as you need. So now that you have the event defined or the message, let's see how we handle those events. And for this, we are going to be using a platform event trigger flow. And it's really simple. We just select uh, the event that we have defined, in this case, the batch scan. And for this example, we have defined uh, an, API, uh, an Apex action that is going to store those payloads into a big object. But of course, you can do any automation here using uh, this local uh, solution. So just be aware that you need to bulkify your code because you could be receiving multiple events at the same time. So again, this simple scenario is just going to save or to store the payload in uh, a big object because it saves you for, you know, it's, it, it's helps you keeping your storage limits uh, OK. So now that we have the event and the uh, handlers, let's see how we are going to um, publish those events. So for this example, we're going to be using uh, this uh, PubSub API client that was built by Philippe Ozil and is available for downloading in uh, GitHub. Uh, we are going to provide the resources later. But essentially here in this node application, we're going to import, of course, the PubSub API client. Uh, then uh, the, the authentication uh, is going to be handled using a .m file really secure way um, following the best practices for, for example, implementing JWT authentications. And after uh, you import and you create the client, we just run the connect function. And this is going to be authenticating. And after you have the client and the connection, you will be able to subscribe or to publish using the same connection. So in this case, we are going to just show the publishing side. For that, we need to define the payload. And here we set the attributes. We have defined it in our platform event uh, using the API name of, of the fields. And then we just call the publish uh, function, specifying the, the channel name that is going to be event for the case of platform events. And we set the, um, the API name of the event. And finally, we just um, set the payload as the, the second parameter. One important thing to know here is that we have now a published result. And this is really handy to know if the uh, platform event was really published. Uh, because previously, we, we didn't have an, an knowledge of, of that publishing. We just uh, were notified that the um, event was in queue, but not necessarily, uh, necessarily published. 
So now we, we can have the replay ID, for example, so we know uh, that the event was published. So for our example, we are going to use a similar script or this script, and we are going to run it inside a for loop, simulating the different scans in the different uh, booths. So uh, we have here the terminal open. I'm, I'm just going to run this script. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, it's connected now. Don't worry much about the uh, prints there, but it's just printing you know, the uh, different times it's taking to, to publish the events. But we are simulating a lot of uh, events or scans of the, of the badges. So now, um, if we go back to Salesforce, um, and if we open this application called the Streaming Monitor, that is a, a really handy um, application that you can download from the App Exchange. Um, you can use it for testing purposes or for debugging. Uh, you, you can do a lot of things, for example, subscribing to channels and also publishing uh, different events. So let's here subscribe to our uh, custom platform event that we have created. And here we are going to see in real time how those events are arriving. And we can, of course, inspect the different payloads. If I can grab one, <laughs> it's really fast. So, yeah. So here we have the payload there. We are saying in real time. So um, this application also has some useful feature for seeing the event usage of, of daily usage of the events. But also, uh, you can inspect the, your or limits for, for the day or for, for the month. Uh, and in this case, we have here the daily uh, delivery platform events. And one important thing to mention here also is that now with PubSub API, you are just hitting the limits uh, of the publishing, uh, and of, of course, delivering. But we are not using the limits of the REST API. So we are just using one limit. So just to conclude, here uh, we have this application that we built. And this is the definition of our platform event. And we have used this component that we also downloaded from the App Exchange that is called the uh, Big Object Related List. That is mainly showing us uh, all the logs that were stored. You see here is uh, the time we are now. And this is to, to show that we process the result using, using the flow. So yeah, the next step will be for, for you to implement this kind of architecture to go and check uh, the different resources we are going to provide. The, user, the developer experience has improved a lot with these uh, new integrations, you know, this new API. So um, here you will see some of the resources we have used for this presentation. And yeah, we encourage you to go and download them and start using them in, the, in your preferred language because it, it's, really, it's really easy, right? Yes, as you can see, it's super easy. Uh, it was a pleasure for us to be here giving this session to all of you. And we hope that with all this content, now you're able to answer the first question that we did and see if actually Pubs API uh, fits your needs. Thanks for attending. Thank you.